Hello, welcome to episode 163 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die, from 1933. It is Zero for Conduct by French filmmaker Jean Vigo, who had a very short career. He died quite young, uh, and the Criterion release um, packages together his entire filmography, which is comprised of four films. So I've seen all of his films, I watched all of them. Uh, the first two are very short documentaries, which are, they are what they are, you know, there's some interesting visual ideas, the uh, ways in which he used the camera and some effects that were quite cool, but uh, nothing to stand out. Um, Zero for Conduct was his first narrative fiction film, is 44 minutes long, so it's not feature length. Um, and it's included in, in the book, Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die, so uh, I figured it would be pretty um, substantial. And what I found was that it, it wasn't. Um, there were a lot of interesting ideas in it, um, you know, the ideas of anarchism and uh, rebelling uh, against uh, authority, and the, the, the film is set in a boarding school for boys. Uh, the opening scene of the film was perhaps my favourite, where we have these two boys getting on the train, uh, and there's a new teacher who's kind of um, in the carriage with them, but he's asleep, he's got his jacket over him, and it reminded me of the prisoner of Azkaban, actually, when Lupin is asleep in the train as the kids are going off to Hogwarts, but um, these two boys, obviously, you know, have gone away for a break, or maybe it's summer break, something like that, and they're eager to show each other, like, the cool cool stuff they picked up over, like, you know, the, the time they've been away from school. And they basically have this, you know, dick measuring contest of the cool shit that they've got. It's like, hey, look at this thing I've got. He's like, no, 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 he's like, no, no, look, look at this. He pulls something out of his jacket and starts playing a trumpet with his nose. He's like, yeah, yeah, and then, have a look at this. And it just felt so uh, authentic. It felt like kids' behavior, and it was quite a lengthy kind of scene, felt improvised. Improvised. I loved it. Um, that yeah, my favorite part of the film, I think. Uh, so these kids, they go back to school, and um, the idea uh, of, of anarchism was something that was put into Jean Vigo by his father. His father was an, an anarchist and uh, and died, uh, and, and I think Jean Vigo believed his father was murdered. There's a whole story there uh, in itself, and it's kind of autobiographical. Going to this this boarding school for boys. Uh, and the film just basically shows these kids slowly rebelling, uh, you know, bucking against the authority of the school, the teachers, and there's some colourful characters in the school. The new teacher who comes in uh, was very fun. Uh, he was a Chaplin fan, obviously, the character. He does a little Chaplin imitation during the film to please the kids, and he seems to go along with the kids' spirit of rebelling. He, he doesn't really mind that they're, you know, kind of doing these things. And there's, a, there's some interesting techniques, again, like, uh, kind of, I think there's a bit of stop motion animation in there, there's there's these little kind of tricks and some slow motion photography which is very nice to look at, you know, you film something in true slow motion, you know, it looks gorgeous almost no matter what you, you do it with. Uh, and there's a very famous shot in it where the kids have just, you know, they're absolutely rebelling and there's some slow motion shots that really celebrate this this uplifting moment for these kids um, and you kind of see you know the, the penis of one of the, the little boys there and that contributed to this film being screened in in France in 1933 where it was sub subsequently banned for many years uh, just outright banned we're not showing this you know and uh, so this is one of those films that, that had a bit of a reputation because of its um, you know, banned status. Um, for me, it, it's very tame, you know, but again, you've got to think back to the, the time period. I mean, politically and the, the, the climate at that time, you know, obviously, uh, it, it's a completely, it's a far cry from the world we live in today. So I guess you can kind of get into the mindset of why something like that would have been banned. But even back then, it's kind of ridiculous is the point I'm getting at. Um, I, I liked the, one of the, the higher ups in the school who was this this short man like uh, he was kind of a he had a really funny voice but i mean yeah there's just there's not much to grab onto and i'm coming off um seeing napoleon in the cinema last year the epic from abel gantz which has you know the first 45 minutes roughly of napoleon is this boarding school story kind of with napoleon as a kid and i just found that so much more enjoyable of a of a boys school story i guess uh, which is a weird thing to compare it to, but uh, it I was reminded of it quite quite a lot, I guess, just from the way that the boys looked and so on. And uh, this film, I think, perhaps is probably better as an uh, inspiration tool um, because uh, Truffaut was inspired by this when he made the Four Hundred Blows, which is a far superior film to this. And uh, Lindsay Anderson was very much inspired by this when he made If, which I haven't seen yet, but it's in the book, so I'll get to it at some point in this series. 
Uh, I was going to try and review it straight after this one to kind of, you know, t tie in between the two, but it didn't end up, end up working out that way. I, I like Jean Vigo's style. Uh, you know, just the way the film looks is very nice, but ultimately I just, I didn't really grab onto anything really with the characters. It was fun to see the kids rebelling, but there was a, there was a storyline between the kids that I couldn't get into because I wasn't really sure who was each kid. They looked very similar, and so I just didn't really latch onto any particular character. Um, so ultimately, you know, it was... You know, it wasn't a waste of my time, but it wasn't something that I thought was fantastic. So, is it a film you should see before you die? It's a no from me. Uh, I could see people, you know, maybe going for a yes on this one, and certainly it's something you could watch again and maybe get more out of, but I've got a feeling that it's just one of those films that uh, I enjoyed, but uh, I didn't quite get the hype on it. So, that's it for now. Uh, in the next video, I'll be covering Jean Vigo's first feature-length film and his last film, in general, which is really sad, but um, a bit more to say about that one. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and again, I'll see you in the next one.